Hello, I'm Joy Lawrence. Welcome to my Ernest Hemingway PowerPoint presentation. The sources I used are biography.com, nobelprize.org, and Hemingway, a biography. Ernest Hemingway was born in 1899 and died in 1961. I know your book says that he was born in 1898, but all the other sources that I have seen have said 1899, so we're going to go with that one. Hemingway liked to think of his writing as an iceberg where you have one-eighths meaning above the surface and seven-eighths meaning below the surface. This is something that you may want to think about when you are reading his story, Hills Like White Elephants. One of the things you need to cover in your literary analysis is Hemingway's language use. Think about the conversation that the people are having in the story. What is it that's not being said? We can all relate to this. We have conversations in our own lives where we feel like there's something you're not telling me. What is it that you're withholding? What is beneath the surface? So think about that when you're reading Hemingway's story. He was born July 21st, 1899 in Oak Park, Illinois. This is Hemingway here in the far right. His father was a doctor. His mother was an aspiring opera singer who gave up her chance at a career to stay home and tend to the family. He, for the first two years of his life, was treated like a girl. His mother always wanted to have twins, so she pretended that Ernest Hemingway was a girl and the twin sister of his sister, who was close to him in age. While it was common to dress babies and toddlers in dresses, no matter their gender, as you see here, it was not common to pretend that your baby was a different gender so that you could fulfill your desire to have twins. That was weird. He was a cub reporter for the Kansas City Star after he graduated from high school. And one of the things that he did was to read the Star Style Guide so that he can incorporate advice like use short first sentences and paragraphs, use vigorous English into his own writing style. When we entered World War I, he wanted to join the U.S. Army, but was rejected because of his poor vision. So instead, he joined the Red Cross Ambulance Corps. July 8, 1918, he was wounded delivering supplies to soldiers on the front line. Here he is recuperating at a hospital in Milan. The way that he was injured was by mortar shell and machine gun fire, and even though he had several wounds, he was able to staunch the flow of blood by plugging his cigarette butts that he had on him into the holes. He was also able to pull another soldier back to safety from the front line, and for this he was awarded the Silver Medal of Military Valor from the Italian government. While he was recuperating in that hospital in Milan, he met and fell in love with his nurse, Agnes von Kurowski. And these are pictures of Agnes von Kurowski here and Hemingway with her. She was from Washington, D.C. and six years older than Hemingway. The two of them would visit each other. Let me go back to those pictures. The two of them would visit each other. Uh, well, she would come and visit him in his hospital room. They would write notes back and forth to each other. It was something they had to keep secret because it was unseemly then, just as it would be now for a nurse to have a romantic relationship with her patient. But at night, when nobody else was around, she would come visit him in his hospital room. You know what I'm saying. Visit him. She ended up breaking off the affair, and in her breakup letter... She wrote, I expect to be married soon. That was not true. She was not really engaged to be married. She told Hemingway that in an effort to soften the blow of breaking up. Because that always makes us feel better, right? When the person who breaks up with us tells us they already have somebody they're dating. Yeah, that didn't work so well with Hemingway either. His uh, revenge that he took on Agnes was to write a book called Farewell to Arms where he inc incorporated some of his real life events like the main character drives an ambulance for the Red Cross. He's wounded on the front line. He recuperates in a hospital where he falls in love with the nurse. The nurse in that story though ends up getting pregnant and dying in childbirth and that is Hemingway's revenge. 
He moves back to the United States after he is done serving in the war and meets and falls in love with Hadley Richardson. They met through mutual friends. She was eight years older than he was. And even though she was older, she was unworldly, naive, and inexperienced. They married September 3rd, 1921. Hemingway met Pauline Pfeiffer in 1925. She was the editor for the Paris edition of Vogue magazine. The two of them developed a very close relationship, and she also developed a relationship with Hadley. And Hemingway and Pauline started having an affair. Hadley discovered the affair when she told Hemingway that she knew. He told her that he wanted a divorce so that he could marry Pauline. She gave him conditions for the divorce, which were that he had to stay away from Pauline for a certain period of time. If he could do that without talking to her, seeing her, or sending notes to her, she would grant him a divorce without any trouble. He was able to do that, and, she, and Hadley granted him the divorce. Their divorce was final in January of 1927. That following May, Hemingway and Pauline married. That's something they're going to see is the overlap in his relationships. In 1928, Hemingway's father committed suicide. The controversy that Hemingway created during this time was that he was going around talking about how his father was going to hell. By the way, this is a picture of Hemingway and his father shaking hands. Hemingway was a devout Catholic at this time, and so this was something that was really weighing on him. A family friend finally pulled him aside and said, yeah, you're really making people uncomfortable with all this hell talk, and you maybe save it until after the funeral. In 1937, as a war correspondent, Hemingway covered the Spanish Civil War. He was joined by Martha Gellhorn, who is uh, here in this picture, and the two of them struck up a very close friendship. Hmm, I wonder what's going to happen. Martha started spending a lot of time at the Hemingway household, became friends with Pauline, said that she nearly became a fixture there. He and Martha do start having an affair. And at this point in their marriage, Pauline and Ernest Hemingway are starting to grow apart. They fight a lot about the Spanish Civil War, which might seem weird that a married couple might fight about something going on in another country. But this was indicative of problems in their marriage. As a devout Catholic, Pauline is siding with Franco in the Civil War. Hemingway is starting to move away from Catholicism at this point, and he does eventually reach the point of being a complete atheist. So he is siding with the revolutionaries in the Civil War, and this is just reminding them of the problems in their own marriage. Hemingway married Martha, November 5th, 1940, the day after his divorce from Pauline became final. Martha Gilhorn re uh, resented being referred to as Hemingway's wife and being identified as Hemingway's wife. She was very bright and talented and a good war correspondent and writer. She wanted to be recognized on her own merits. A lot of times when granting an interview, one of the conditions would be that they were not allowed to mention Hemingway's name or that she was his wife. During the D-Day landings, that was when war correspondents really wanted to get that story, but it was difficult because the military was keeping them out because of the danger. Hemingway was not able to get in, but Martha was because she dressed up as a nurse, pretended she was medical personnel, and she was able to get to the shore and scoop the story. And this kind of irritated Hemingway. At this point, they're becoming more rival correspondents than they are a married couple. Hmm, I wonder what's going to happen. In 1944, he met Mary Welsh, a war correspondent from Minnesota. The two of them become close friends. They start up a relationship, and they do start having an affair. Hemingway and Gilhorn got a divorce, and Hemingway went back to Cuba. He and, and Mary got married on March 14, 1946. November 30, 1960, he was hospitalized for severe depression. He went, underwent electric shock therapy, and this, instead of helping, it created significant memory loss and made it so that he could no longer write, which drove him even deeper into a, a deeper depression. And this depression can really be seen even before the electric shock therapy started, when he won the Nobel Prize for Literature, and he could not go, but this is the 
speech that he wrote. This is an excerpt from the acceptance speech that he wrote. And he wrote, there is no lonelier man than the writer when he is writing except the suicide. So that is something that is already on his mind. Remember, his father committed suicide. Hemingway does die by committing suicide July 2nd, 1961. It was two weeks before his 62nd birthday. Now, when you read Hills Like White Elephants, remember, I do want you to pay attention to the language use that Hemingway is utilizing there. What strategies is he using? And you do, for this one, get to choose whichever criticism you want to use for your literary analysis. I hope this presentation has given you something to help with reading the story and understanding Hemingway. Thanks, and I'll see you next time.